This is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. In today's video, we're going to make these adorable candy corn coasters. This project is a great last minute fall gift idea as each coaster takes only about an hour or so to make in a little less time if you're a super fast knitter. You could really make a set over the course of an afternoon or over a few evenings depending on your knitting schedule. This tutorial is geared for moderate beginners and higher and assumes you already know the following skills. Casting on, the knit stitch, knit two stitches together decrease, and binding off. Once you've mastered all these skills, I'm confident you can tackle this pattern. A complete list of materials can be found in the description box below. And to make it easier, you'll want to follow along with the written pattern while you watch that video. You can find the free pattern on my blog and I'll have that linked in the description box below as well. Before we get started, I want to take the time to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and to hit the bell so you never miss a new tutorial. I post new patterns on Tuesdays and new stitch techniques on Fridays, so you definitely don't want to miss out. And now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Starting with the gold color yarn, make a slip knot. Place slip knot on your needle, pull tight to secure, and begin by casting on 22 stitches. And just remember, your slip knot counts as your first cast on stitch. I now have 22 stitches on my needle and now I'm ready to begin row 1. In row 1, we're just going to knit into each stitch across the row. I've just about finished my first row, I'm just working on my last couple of knit stitches, and now I've completed row 1. So for the next 7 rows, you're just going to knit back and forth in rows. So go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you have knitted 8 total rows. Now we're ready to begin row 9. For row 9, we're going to knit into the first stitch. And the next stitch is going to be a decrease. We're actually going to knit the next two stitches together. So knit those two stitches together. Knit across the row until you reach your last three stitches. I've just reached my last three stitches, so for my next stitch is going to be a decrease stitch, and I'm going to knit the next two stitches together, and then I'm going to knit into the last stitch. We've now completed row 9, and we're ready to begin row 10, so we can turn our work and start row 10. For row 10, we are just going to knit into each stitch. I'm almost to the end of row 10. I just have my last stitch. And for rows 11 and 12, we're just going to knit back and forth in those two rows too. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed rows 11 and 12. I've just completed row 12 and I'm ready to cut my yarn. After I cut my yarn, I'm gonna grab color carrot and have it handy. 
Take your needle and insert it into your stitch like you would to knit. Grab your next color, wrap it around your working needle, and complete the knit stitch as usual. You'll want to grab your two tails and hold them out of the way and pull them a little bit tight so you can kind of secure your first couple stitches. When I'm doing a color change, I like to knit into the first couple stitches of the row. So I'm knitting into this one, knitting into this next one. And once I've sufficiently knitted um, a couple stitches in and got it a little bit more secure, I put it down and then I just tie the two tails together to secure it a little bit more. Now I can keep working across the row as usual. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've knitted across this row. So I'm just finishing up row 13, doing my last stitch, and now I'm ready to turn my work and do row 14. So we're just going to be knitting back and forth in rows until we complete row 16. If you'd like, once again, pause here and meet back up with me once you've knitted up through row 16. I'm now ready to begin row 17. For row 17, we're going to start by knitting into the first stitch, and then we're going to decrease by knitting into the next two stitches together. You're going to knit across the rest of the row until you reach the last three stitches. Still on row 17, I've reached my last three stitches and I'm going to knit those two, next two stitches together and then I'm going to knit into my last stitch. So that completes row 17. For rows 18 through 22, we're going to just knit back and forth in rows. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've finished row 22. We're now ready to begin row 23, which is another decrease row. Knit into that first stitch and then we're going to knit the next two stitches together as if it were one, and then knit into each stitch across the row until you reach the last three stitches. I've reached the last three stitches. I'm going to knit those next two together and then I'm going to knit into the last stitch. This now completes row 23 and now for rows 24 through 26 we're simply going to knit back and forth in rows. Once again if you'd like go ahead pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed row 26. At this point, I've just finished up row 26 and I'm ready to cut my yarn and change to the last color, which is white. Just like we did for our last color change, we're going to use the same method. I'm going to take my needle and insert it into that first stitch. I'll grab my next color, wrap it around my working needle, and I'll complete the stitch as usual. But before I do that, I'm going to just make sure I grab those two tails and hold them out of the way with my other hand. I'm now going to complete the stitch as usual. And I like to knit into the first three or so stitches before I tie the two tails together. So I've knitted those so the yarn is nice and secure in there, but I like to just go ahead and tie those two tails together just to keep them extra secure. And by the way, this is row 27, so I'm going to continue knitting across this row until I get to the end. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just finishing up row 27 and actually for the next rows 28 through 34, they're just going to be knit as well. So if you'd like, once again, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed row 34. I'm now ready to begin row 35 and this row is another decrease row. I'm going to knit into my first stitch, knit the next two stitches together, and then I'm going to knit into each stitch across the row until I reach the last three stitches. So I'm at my last three stitches, I'm going to knit those next two together, and then I'm going to knit into the last stitch. We're now ready to turn our work and begin row 36. For row 36, we're going to knit into each stitch across the row. I'm just about finishing up row 36, knitting into my last stitch. Now I'm turning my work and ready to begin row 37. For row 37, once again, that's another decrease row, so I'm going to knit into that first stitch, knit the next two stitches together, and then I'm going to knit into each stitch across the row until I reach the last three stitches. I've reached the last three stitches, so I'm going to knit those next two together, and then knit into the last stitch. I'm now ready to be in row 38, and for row 38, I'm just going to knit into each stitch across the row. I'm just finishing up row 38 and now once again I'm ready to turn my work and begin row 39. Row 39 is once again another decrease row so I'm going to knit into that first stitch, knit the next two stitches together, knit across the row until I reach the last three stitches. I'm at my last three stitches, I'm going to knit those next two together and then knit into the last stitch. And now I'm ready to begin row 40. For row 40, I'm just going to knit into each stitch across the row. I'm now starting on row 41, which is our last decrease row. Once again, we're going to knit into that first stitch, knit the next two stitches together, and then knit into each stitch across the row until we reach the last three stitches. I've just reached my last three stitches. I'm going to knit the next two together, and then knit into that last stitch. We're gonna turn our work, and we're going to complete our last row, which is row 42, and we're just going to knit into each stitch across the row. We've just completed our last row and now we're ready to bind off. So we're going to turn our work and we're going to knit into each one of the first two stitches. So knit into that first stitch, knit into that second, and then you're going to slide that first stitch up and over the second and off of your knitting needle. Knit into the next stitch, slide that first stitch up and over that second stitch and off your needle. Knit into the next stitch. Slide that first stitch up and over the second and off your needle. 
Repeat this process until you get to the end of the row. So I've just completed my last bind off stitch and now I'm ready to cut my yarn. And then you want to take your tail and pull it through that last loop. Pull the tail tight to secure. So we've just finished the knitting portion of our coaster. And now all we have left to do is to flip it over to the wrong side and weave in all of our ends. So grab your yarn needle. I am using a Clover brand. I believe I got this for Joann's and I think it was under $5. It's really nice. It has that little cute little case and it comes with two yarn needles inside. I'm always losing these guys so it's nice to have it in a little holder so I know exactly where it's at. At this point we're going to flip our coaster over. Grab a tail and thread it into your yarn needle. And as you can see, it has an angle tip, which makes it super easy for weaving in. And this video is not sponsored by the way, I just really like these yarn needles. I'll be sure to have them linked in the description box below. Weave your tails back and forth until you feel that they're sufficiently weaved in, and then you can go ahead and cut them once you feel that they're secure. Repeat this process for each of your remaining tails. At this point, I've weaved in all my tails, and now this is the finished project. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a new tutorial. I typically come out with new patterns on Tuesdays and new um, stitch techniques on Fridays, so you definitely don't want to miss out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!